What is up awesome people of the internet? We are five weeks into the 2023 WNBA season and uh, the Phoenix Mercury are kind of terrible. Um, and I would even call it unintentionally tanking. So, you know, the Phoenix Mercury went from uh, title contenders to a very solid playoff team uh, to now the bottom of the league. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Phoenix Mercury, uh, some of the challenges that they've been having and uh, what I think needs to be done to kind of right the ship and ensure that, you know, the Phoenix Mercury has a very solid team going forward um, next year. All right, so let's get started. The Phoenix Mercury had a lot of excitement around them for this season, you know, primarily because Brittany Griner was back. You know, she's back on American soil and, you know, uh, she said she's ready to play basketball. And we just saw article after article and countless ESPN pieces talking about how great it is that Brittany Griner is back and how she's going to make the Mercury, you know, kind of a much watched team for this season. Not only is, is uh, Brittany Griner back, but Diana Taurasi said that she's gonna play one more year so she can play with BG. And so like, wow, this is gonna be so amazing to have these great players play. Um, Brittany Griner returning, um, Diana Taurasi possibly playing for the last season. It was just like all the fanfare about this the season for the for the uh, Phoenix Mercury. And, uh, you know, there was talk about, oh, could Brittany Griner be the MVP for this season? And uh, I, I have to admit, you know, I did kind of get sucked into that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think she actually could be the MVP for this season. Uh, you know, but uh, I was for sure, for sure wrong. Um, not not because, you know, Brittany Griner is playing bad this season. She's not. Um, this year, she's averaging 20 points a game, six rebounds per game. Um, so solid numbers. It's, uh, for me, it's it's mainly about, you know, her health. She just recently missed two games um, because I think she has a hip injury. Um, also, you know, the players around her kind of makes it impossible for her, like, even if she was totally healthy. And even, let's say she was scoring, you know, 26 points a game. Uh, it, MVP is still out of the cards for her because the talent around her is not very good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's let's get into that. Let's let's get into uh, the the real problem uh, as to why um, the Phoenix Mercury have been pretty terrible this season. Um, you have some players who are actually doing pretty well, like Sophie Cunningham and Suck Sutton. Um, these players are playing their role really well um, and just doing a great job for the team. Um, but you also have players like Brianna Turner, who has just been a, on a downward spiral for the last two years. Like she's just been bad, you know, in 2021, she was solid, you know, had, uh, you know, 7.8 points a game, averaging nine, nine rebounds per game. Uh, last year, she had half of those numbers. Um, and this year she's even worse, you know, um, she's only averaging two points a game and six rebounds. Brianna Turner is averaging like 20 plus minutes a game. And you know her just not really doing anything um, on the on the offensive end um, is just really really hurting um, the Mercury's chances to actually win games, uh, especially in games where you know Brittany Griner uh, can't play like these last two games. Uh, um, you know the roster is filled with uh, average players like Avina Westbrook, uh, Katie Sisisko, Michaela Onyewede. Um, and specifically for Michaela Onyewede, I really like her as a player. I think she's a very, very solid player. Um, you know, if, if she's on any other team in the league, uh, she's not a starter. She is a starter for uh, the Phoenix Mercury. I see her being a player that comes right off the bench, you know, maybe as like uh, the seventh player in um, for a team. Um, but the fact that she is starting for Phoenix, it's just not a great look. They have a roster problem filled with and they're, they're filled with players who who are okay, um, but not really great, you know? Um, but I think ultimately uh, their roster problem uh, kind of starts with the elephant in the room. Um, and I know some of y'all will come at me, but I'm gonna just say it, you know? Uh, I think the elephant in the room is Dinah Rousey and how, um, She's kind of messing, you know, messing uh, Phoenix up this season. Uh, now, you know, anyone who knows anything about WNBA, anyone who knows anything about the uh, women's basketball in general, you know how amazing Diana Taurasi has been 
for the growth of the game. Like she's been phenomenal. You know, Diana Tarazi has been um, just an amazing, amazing player for years. And personally, I've been a fan of hers for a very long time. Uh, but, you know, um, I believe right now Diana Tarazi is hurting the, the Phoenix Mercury and she's doing the Phoenix Mercury a disservice by being on the roster. Um, yes, she's actually having a very solid year. She's averaging like 15 points a game, six assists. So like solid. But the question I ask is at what cost? You know, according to her hoop stats, the Mercury are paying Diana, Diana Tarazi $234,000 a season. Um, and I think this has really hurt their ability to get quality players on their roster. You know, their roster is filled with, you know, um, okay players who are more of bench players for other teams, but they're getting significant minutes uh, for Phoenix because Phoenix doesn't have anybody else. And so I think if Dinah Tarazi wasn't on this roster, you would have you would have had more money to get better quality players. And also she takes a lot of games off. Like it's just a thing. She's been doing it for, for the last couple of years where she just decides, well, yeah, I don't really want to play. So yeah, she's in the game, but she's not doing anything. But I think it just, I think it hurts the Mercury's ability to move forward as as a team and fully go 100% in on Brittany Griner as their um, star and fully build around her. Um, because I think having um, big players like like a Dinah Tarazi and like a uh, Sue Bird who are in their sort of final years in, in the league, I think it ultimately hurts the team because um, the, team's, the team won't be able to get a new identity because you're still hanging on to the your once best player who is not as talented as they used to be, but who is uh, garnering a huge um, amount of money um, and you're not able to fully develop uh, some of the bench players to to take over because you know that star player who is on the decline is still getting a lot of the attention so i don't know y'all may fully disagree with me on that and that's totally fine but that's that's just what i think about um diana tarazi um but it's not just it's not like a this isn't just a diana tarazi issue um ultimately i think the buck stops with uh head coach vanessa nygaard um you know last year you know I think uh, I gave Vanessa Nygaard a pass because, you know, she wasn't expecting Brittany Griner to be gone, um, you know, from the team last season. Um, you know, of course, as we all know, uh, Brittany Griner was detained in Russia uh, during the WBA season last year. And, you know, um, Vanessa Nygaard was expecting to, you know, have Brittany Griner play last season. So, like, I get it. You know, you had a hard time dealing with players' emotions and whatnot um, with Brittany Griner being um, – out um and so it, it wasn't necessarily your fault you know uh with how the team played last season you also had some injuries as well so like it okay whatever that's a pass um but now going into this season I was very very excited to see what Vanessa Nygaard's system actually looked like with Brittany Reiner playing and after watching several games it just I just wonder if um, Vanessa Nygaard is even the right coach for this team. You know, um, it's, it doesn't seem like she has a real vision for what this Phoenix Mercury team can do. Um, and just the way that with things stand, um, you know, I, I don't think, you know, uh, uh, Vanessa Nygaard is, is creating the, the environment that Skylar Diggins Smith wants to return to. Um, there was there was some stuff happening with you know Skylar Diggins Smith and Dana Tarazi last season. I think there's also like some uh, possible you know issues between Vanessa Nygaard and Skylar Diggins Smith, and so I just I just think Nygaard has kind of made a situation where you know I would say your second best player on this team, um, Skylar Diggins Smith is not coming to play for you all. Like, yes, she's had a baby. Yes, she's on maternity leave. Um, but ultimately, I think at this point, it's probably in her hands on if she even wants to return this season or if she just wants to keep the rest of her um, maternity leave. So, for example, you know, D.R.K. Ambie just had a baby and she is fully back 
yes, that's her choice. And yes, that's like health stuff related to it. So this is not me saying that, you know, um, this is not me giving any judgment towards what um, Skylar Diggins Smith is doing at all. I'm just saying it's technically possible if Skylar Diggins Smith wanted to return. I think the situation at Phoenix is just so toxic with the exception of um, Brittany Griner. I think everything else is just kind of toxic and um, it's kind of why uh, Skylar Diggins Smith doesn't want to return for right now. At least this is my opinion. Um, so, so, you know, I could totally be wrong, but this is me sort of like trying to read the room. Um, I've been watching Phoenix play for uh, several years now and I really paid a lot of attention to them last year and it just, I just, I just don't think, I just don't think this team is, uh, has the right personnel uh, on the court and also um, coaching. Um, I don't think Vanessa Nygaard is, is helping them. I don't think Brianna Turner is helping them. Uh, you know, I, I just, I just, I just don't think she is. And, you know, I think her salary is like 150000 a year. And so they they just need to right the ship and get and get some new players in and get a new coach in um and just try to get in next season you know um right now the phoenix mercury is two uh two of eight on the season um i could totally see a situation where the phoenix mercury in this season in dead last place winning like only six games or something like that you know like they're they're terrible um and i hope that they get better you know um, from a narrative perspective, it's kind of hard for uh, for everyone to still be like, oh, BG, 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 when she's on the worst team in the world or, or worst team in the league. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of it's kind of tough. I I wanted to not just leave with a negative video. I wanted to um, give a vision that I kind of see for um, the Phoenix Mercury. And, uh, and just sort of sort of end this video on a, on a, on a positive of sorts. Um, you know, uh, I think next year the Phoenix Mercury can really right the ship um, and have a way, 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 way better season. You know, um, I, I think, um, you know, uh, Phoenix talks to Diana Tarazi um, and convinces her to hundred percent announced that she is retiring and she will not return next season. Um, I think that the Mercury should trade Brianna Turner um, and get rid of Vanessa Nygaard as the coach um, and hire someone else. I'm thinking of maybe, uh, you know, someone like Teresa Witherspoon uh, who spent some time with uh, as an assistant coach for the Pelicans. You know, uh, I'm just throwing her name, her name out there. You know, uh, there's lots of other coaches to choose from. Um, but I think she'd be a pretty interesting coach for, um, for Phoenix and could probably write the ship. Um, Phoenix should for sure keep Sophie Cunningham and they should try to do whatever they can to get a player like Skylar Deegan Smith. I think, uh, to replace, you know, um, Brianna Turner, they get someone like, uh, Alana Smith, who's a unrestricted free agent next year. Um, maybe they get a player like Satu Sabali, who is a restricted free agent, uh, next year. Um, you know, it, it, one of them, you know, or both could be really good sort of playing off of Brittany Griner. Um, and in terms of guards, I think, I think maybe you try to get someone like a Jewel Lloyd. Um, if she leaves Seattle, she probably doesn't leave Seattle, but she is a free agent next year. Um, you know, try, try what you can with her. Uh, I also think maybe you look into Benajelani and try to get her on the roster. Um, you know, it could be worth a shot. You know, I, I think, uh, I think Phoenix, you know, they will end up really terrible in the standings and, and that gives them the opportunity to get, to possibly get, you know, a top three pick next season, which, you know, if you can get a, if you can grab a guard, it would be really awesome, um, for their, for their prospects next season. If you're able to get a, uh, you know, a top guard coming out of college, um, to play with Brittany Griner. Um, so let's say you don't get a player like uh, Skylar Diggins Smith to return and she goes somewhere else. Fingers crossed she goes to Indiana, but you know, uh, let's say she goes somewhere else. Okay, well you can get a you can get another guard who um, has the potential to to be a very quality player for your team. So I think uh, I think you know Phoenix they have their their number one player in Brittany Griner. And I think it's important for them to, um, 
build around that and get players who could kind of um, players who are okay with not being the best player on the team and players who are able to work with a dominant big. And I think, um, yeah, I think, I think Phoenix has the, the uh, ability to rewrite the ship and to be very good next year, next season. Um, assuming if they make um, a coaching change and they make some changes to the personnel. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you all think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, do you think I'm totally wrong about what I said about Diana Tarazi? Is that like bas basketball blasphemy? Um, let me know what you all think. Um, this was a very opinionated video of mine. Um, uh, a couple videos back, someone was saying, hey, you need to be more opinionated. Uh, we want you to tell opinions, not just tell facts. And so this is my opinionated video. I have lots of opinions about a lot of things. And so um, I just don't know if, uh, if, it, if it's helpful to sort of move the conversation about the WBA women's basketball forward for me to share my uh, uh, opinions about what's going on. But if, uh, if you all think it's helpful, and if you all find it valuable, let me know in the comments below and I will um, consider making more videos of this. Um, usually I love to be extremely positive about everything, uh, but not everything is positive. And I think, um, I think you know, um, the way Phoenix is right now is very problematic, you know? Um, and as, as a person who was like really looking forward to watching Brittany Griner play, I just, Yes, I'm watching the Phoenix Mercury play, but I, I, I don't really like watching them. You know, they're not they're they're not the funnest team to watch, uh, mainly because I'm like seeing some of the uh, some of the plays that they're running, um, just some of the personnel that they have on the court, and I'm just like, what are you doing? You know, um, so it, it, I I'm finding it frustrating as a player, as a not a player, as a fan to kind of watch them play. And I, I just want to know, like, are you all feeling the same way? Uh, are you a Phoenix fan? Um, if you are, seriously, tell me what you think about Coach Nygaard. Like, really, do you think that she should be back on this team next season? This is not me saying that she's a horrible coach. I just think she's a bad fit for this team. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, again, very opinionated. Uh, seriously, let me know what y'all think about, about – uh, sharing my opinions on a lot of these videos. All right, guys, uh, that is the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please like it. If you uh, have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Again, thank you so much. Go Sky. Um, and uh, until next time, guys. Bye.